Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Isaac Christopher Luogo, and I'm here in uh, Neustadt, Germany. Um, I've been blessed and honored to be invited by a wonderful gentleman, a man of no mean reputation, and who has actually uh, found his place or his calling in psychology here in Germany. Um, he's called Mr. Horst Bash. He will introduce himself a little bit more, but I would like to take the liberty of uh, inviting you, sir, to our audience in Uganda, particularly, but also in Africa and in the world. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. Can you tell us briefly about yourself? Ah, okay. I'm 65 years old, married and have two adult sons, mm -hmm. uh, 32 and 35 years, mm -hmm. and for more than 15 years, uh, Patrick is a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and uh, so about, uh, because of him I learned a lot about Uganda, and mm -hmm. five years ago mm -hmm. I stayed in Kampala mm -hmm. and met a lot of, met a lot of persons there, yes. and I'm very interested in Africans who suffer on different uh, problems, but mm -hmm. Uh, I hope I can give you some information that I could for you. Right. And very, very important to note is that uh, uh, Mr. Host, who is also an experienced psychologist, and he has got uh, a particular units, I don't know how you call them here. Yes, uh, I studied psychology uh, in the university afterwards of the study. I have a, a 10 year long education in therapy, mm. uh, therapy of children, therapy of adults, and therapy also of s systems, so the systemic approach and the approach of behavioral therapy is my profession. Excellent. So for 30 years I'm working with uh, um, ill people, mental ill people, mm. in our German uh, healthcare service. Excellent. Okay, um, particularly by way of introduction, I know that our discussion points will cut across, but particular things that have to do with culture stigma and mental health, uh, cultural expression and distress, cultural competence in mental health care, cross-cultural differences in diagnosis and treatment, indigenous heating practices and integration, um, access to mental health services, immigration and accuration, um, intersectionality, community-based health, mental health. And uh, particularly, I would like, as a precursor, to have a general introduction about psychology. What is psychology? I would like to argue, perhaps but as an introduction, then you can build on that, for, uh, mm -hmm. my brother. Psychology basically, uh, you know, is a scientific study of human behavior and mental processes. And it seeks to understand and explain how individuals think, feel and behave in various situations and circumstances. Uh, is there something out of your practice that you want to add on that definition of psychology? So in, in university, I learned the state of mind of what's uh, in, in the professional uh, um, art of ma making therapy and what's to know about uh, psychology. My um, outstanding uh, interests is to see not only the classical kind of how to find a diagnosis uh, or how to treat them, but how to explain uh, illness in, um, in a philosophical uh, kind of uh, language, because uh, in every culture persons create their own reality mm. and this kind of thinking, this kind of how they frame their uh, all day life, mm. it's make, it makes a difference how um, how good they can cope stress. Right. And uh, so you're virtually saying that psychology has a lot of advantage. You mentioned some of them. I would probably hint a few. Mm -hmm. uh, in the interest of time, self-awareness and personal growth as an advantage, uh, understanding others because we are interrelated, interconnected, yeah. and perhaps that also reminds me of uh, the interconnection that we have 
uh, with one another as, uh, as, as human beings in this ecosystem that's intertwined. And then the issue of uh, mental health and well-being, perhaps that's another aspect that's extremely important and enhancing performance. Obviously, if our brains or our performance levels are not best, then we will not be able to have, you know, that advantage in terms of uh, acute or productive, uh, uh, you know, best productive uh, output from individuals. Mm. But also education and learning, social change and policy, problem solving and critical thinking, and then research and scientific inquiry uh, also becomes another important aspect in terms of why we need to study psychology. Uh, can you explain to us some of the major branches of psychology? Some of them? Major branches, branches. yes. Okay. Um, one of um, a very important approach is the behavioral therapy approach. Yes. So we focus how um, habits will uh, learn you to feel or think mm. autom automatically. Mm. And uh, you, as a psychologist, you study the history of uh, the creation of the reality of the person mm. and how to make a difference that helps the, this guys to uh, reorganize themselves. In former times, you discuss in psychology um, um, things like character or diagnosis. Uh, ac actually, uh, the systemic approach, for example, um, focus more on the self-reorganization and the input you can get from your environment. Right. Okay, so there are different types of psychology, like uh, the Honorable Gentleman has told us, clinical psychology perhaps, counseling psychology, yeah. um, that is talked about developmental psychology, social psychology, uh, cognitive psychology uh, in terms of understanding the mental process including perception, memory and language problem solving and then behavior psychology. Industrial organization psychology also is another one. Education psychology, health psychology um, and also forensic psychology and that yes. reminds me or of... Legal, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, or criminal psychology. Yes. The, uh, so this, in Germany or in Europe, mm. it's what, it was the start of psychology, wow. not not treating people, mm. not working in the hospitals, mm. but uh, to help lawyers and the court to judge people. Yes, true. And that is something that is actually missing from where I come from. I wrote a book called The Law of Forensics in Uganda, mm. and many of the things that have, I talk about have to do with forensic psychology. I wrote a book, another one called Penology and Criminology, and Criminology as an aspect also has an embed in terms of psychology. And then we have also got what we call Neuropsychology, which mm -hmm. investigates relationship between brain function and behavior. So all those become important. Positive psychology is another one. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can, we may, environmental psychology, cross-cultural psychology, consumer psychology, you know, even now, uh, someone was arguing last time that, that biometrics and also uh, data psychology is also something that is eminent. Google metrics, for example, if I post so much or if I get on YouTube and get to know that I'm interested in Mbappe, for example, as football, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Mbappe or I don't know what's the sport here, uh, maybe FA or, or, or maybe basketball or football like 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 mm -hmm. Lucas, your son, mm -hmm. then then Google will do it in such a way that they will be sending adverts that have to relate with what I ordinarily look out for when I'm watching. Yeah. So that is something that has already been planted by a psychologist behind the, the, the computer and he knows using Google metrics so he can place a note. This is something that they go. Even when you go for shopping, they yeah. send out adverts, but they know that your color is red. So they, they do this. Yes. Yeah, actually, uh, the, the, the whole story about, uh, about uh, artificial intelligence yes. will um, spread these things to a very big thing because you don't know uh, how they tried to manipulate your thoughts mm. with with digital processes, mm. with handy, mm. uh, with all these things mm. uh, in 10 years. Mm. And uh, uh, one of my uh, teachers in the university, mm. uh, I talked with him three years ago mm. and he told me uh, in five years maybe it's better if uh, Facebook will vote for you <laughs> because he knows more about your needs 
absolutely. Yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. What you're saying is true because right now Google Metrics has a way of a state of analyzing how you relate on your computer, on your phone, in such a way that they can actually make predictive decisions and even know that President Trump or perhaps President Biden will be the next president of America because of the trend, yeah. the algorithm that follows. So those predictive algorithms are easily ascertainable. And that's the point you bring about in terms of artificial intelligence. I read a book called uh, The Future Lawyer, where mm -hmm. I make adivacus in terms of artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is basically uh, depends on patterns that have been repetitive and fed in a computer. So the computer can learn to imitate or replicate those patterns yeah. because it has learned those behavior uh, you know, innate behavioral psychological attributes that are independent within the individual. So what you're saying is very true. Um, let me take you a little bit deeper in terms of some of the things that I would have loved us to talk about um, in the interest of uh, our time. What are some of the misconceptions? I know you talked about philosophy. Philosophy is basically a broad and fundamental field of inquiry that explores fundamental questions uh, about the nature and reality in terms of knowledge, ethics, and existence. Uh, so, like philosophy, basically, it's intended to influence uh, various fields in terms of uh, profound impact of aspects of human knowledge. What is your comparison between philosophy and psychology? Okay, for me, uh, I studied both. Oh, excellent. And, and, and I studied the phenomenal, phenomenological approach mm. that was uh, in, in the 20th and 30s last century in mm. Germany. Mm. Uh, so, uh, but it's the, the 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 basic thinking that uh, builds the ground for systemic approach, mm. and uh, actually physics and uh, medicine uh, focused a lot of brain of neuro uh, concepts about the brain, and philosophy helps us. To, to stay in contact that the brain is not the self, mm. the brain is not the ego of a person, mm. and uh, you can't um, construct, as more you understand the, the, function, the, the neurological function of the brain, you, you can't uh, understand the person and the character, and you can't predict what he will do. Mm. You learn a lot about the physics. Mm. You learn, for example, that freedom is also a human construct mm. and that some decisions are made in the brain before you uh, are aware and you, you, you understand what... Uh, so the, the, the former concepts about consciousness or unconsciousness is an uh, old story. Whoa, yeah. excellent. Yeah. Freedom is a, a concept. Yeah. Uh, that's something you must understand, but it's also a replication of your subconsciousness in terms of your thinking. I like that. Mm -hmm. And um, in terms of uh, the misconception, perhaps, that we have between philosophy and psychology, um, there are those who argue in terms of uh, epistemology versus ontology, uh, where they're arguing that ontology is the argument of what is within inside, whereas epistemology is what is outside. Yeah. What is your discourse in terms of that? So I'm I'm uh, I'm a pupil of Heidegger. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, I don't know if you know I Heidegger. Know and, yes. And, and his concept is that um, um, the the ontology of mind is an internal process, mm. and so. Yeah, um, for me it's uh, necessary to understand all the inner processes, but not on a medical, but more on a philosophical or on a, a self-constructional uh, level. Mm -hmm. Wow, excellent. Um, other than Edgar, I have some interesting people that I'd like to bring to your attention. I don't know if uh, uh, some of them come to mind. Mm -hmm. But I know as an experienced person, you probably heard of uh, Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud, yeah. yes, uh, who offered, uh, you referred to the father of psychoanalysis. Yes. Uh, Freud revolutionized what the, the understanding of human behavior. 
in, and it involved what they call the comprehensive theory of unconscious mind, mm -hmm. and also the proposed concept of defense mechanism and then psychosexual development yes. and the role of dreams in understanding the psyche. Yeah. Then people like B.F. Skinner, I probably mm -hmm. heard about him, a leading figure in behaviorism. The yeah. other was Carl Rogers, mm -hmm. known for his contributions of human psychology as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, so um, I'm impressed that uh, those are people who, who you rub shoulders with in terms of uh, intellectualism, as it were. Ivan Pavok is another one, perhaps, and then Abraham Maslow, and mm -hmm. then, of course, Mary Ainworth, and then Lady mm -hmm. Rybowski, and John Watson, several, several others, as we will probably be able to comprehend. Yes, um, particularly also in terms of the follow-up, I would like us to have an interaction or a discussion that has to do with uh, how such psychology can be able to affect uh, the decisions of an ordinary person in day-to-day -day activities. I know, before we go to grief as an, an element that's extremely important, because I know you uh, deal in post-trauma, mm -hmm. uh, also, you know, uh, relief in terms of psychological yeah. relief. But how relevant is a psychologist? Do we need, do I, for example, as an individual, need to have my own psychologist? Do I need to have a review of uh, going to a psychologist to, to, to listen to me or to tell my stories or to counsel me? Um, in Africa, there's a, a saying that we are mad, all of us are mad to only a particular extent. <laughs> you know, I'm not whether, whether that's true or not. I don't know what's your, your input on that. Yeah, <clears throat> my opinion is uh, that uh, I love my job. Mm -hmm. It's a part of my life. Yes. And it's a part of being in life. Uh, but uh, uh, my main goal is to be not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in fact, for example, Sigmund Freud also told you uh, his job was to, to learn uh, the inner processes, to make concepts, to teach uh, medicines or psychologists. But he also told you that analyzing your dream is normally not necessary because uh, in your uh, unconscious part he has his own logic and he finds solutions where you don't need to uh, share it with your consciousness. Mm -hmm. So it works for its own mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes this also defines how I work with clients right. because I am uh, solution focused yes. and I'm very interested about psychoanalysis mm -hmm. and I'm not a, a behavioral therapist mm. uh, uh, in my heart, mm. I'm more a transactional mm. analyst, okay. but um, in fact it's uh, not necessary to have uh, your own psychologist. Okay. In my mind. Okay. Uh, there's a gentleman called Pascal. I don't know if you probably know him, but he probably was um, also a psychologist. Mm -hmm. But he said something that uh, be careful with your wants. <laughs> because the moment you get them, you won't want them anymore. Mm -hmm. He said it's not the it that you want, it's the fantasy of the it. Yeah. In other words, life is like a mirage. Mm -hmm. You know, a mirage. You're chasing a mirage, and then the moment you look at it, you're like, oh my goodness, I have got it, but I don't want it anymore. Yeah. So he says, your desire must be perpetually absent. Mm. It's not the it you want, but the fantasy of the it. Yes. What's your comment about that? Um, hmm. Difficult to tell, because, yes, uh, I, I agree with uh, Pascal, because if you um, are not focused on your on your goals or on your uh, desires, but they they rule you uh, unconsciously, uh, maybe it it helps to find more uh, happiness mm -hmm. than if you understand everything. Okay, it's like love. Yeah. Like if love. you understand mm. uh, all details, how because you love your woman, mm -hmm. maybe you should lose you lose interest. Absolutely. <laughs> in others, sometimes they say the devil is in the details. Yes. <laughs> so never be very careful with that. Yeah. So, anyways, I am. But yes. Uh, uh, also, I think uh, 
it, it is necessary in this kind of uh, how we uh, are interested in truth now mm -hmm. in our discussion. Mm -hmm. Psychology is not uh, 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 an all-day trend mm -hmm. to uh, to think about everything, mm -hmm. but uh, it's necessary uh, in the philosophical kind or also in the political mm -hmm. kind. And so you need um, ad advices, hints for people who defines the rules and games of the society. Excellent, excellent. Let's talk about. Uh, maybe before I lose that, I would like to smuggle in something in respect to our blueprint okay. that we're following uh, that had to do with hypnosis. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a gentleman uh, called Spoonbender. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard about Spoonbender. No, I learned uh, hypnosis by Milton Erickson. Okay. There's a guy called Spoonbender. Uh, Spoonbender wrote a book and where he was arguing that uh, one time they were supposed to be going to, 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 they were hired by the US government and was supposed to attend a, a more like a symposium and conference, I think, to be with the people of North Korea. But North Korea and Americans are known not to go along, as you know. And, and they were hired specifically because he said they were hired, they had the gift of sitting down on a desk with you and be able to look at you, but penetrate your mind and cause your mind to be influenced in a certain direction. So they were specifically hired by the US government and they were, went as diplomats and stuff like that every gifting of talent so the, the best of the best of the best in terms of every you know, yeah. attribute so they went and sat and were able to sit down and as they were sitting down their the duty of course the other guys had other things they were doing not that they were only relying on these they had the best you know people in terms of alternative dispute resolutions every you know every segment but these ones were supposed to use their minds penetrate their minds and influence their decisions and spoon bender is a guy who looks at this phone like this and with intent and bends it mm -hmm. and looks at a glass of water with intent and breaks it. Is that part of psychology in your opinion? Is this something that, is this is there a part of the mind that we're not using? It's a I believe in the part of mind that it exists. Uh, in Germany we call this parapsychology mm -hmm. because it's it's difficult no, if you are in the main topics of uh, psychology, uh, it's state of mind to be um, a man of the university mm. and not a man of beliefs and, mm. and hocus pocus. Mm. Yeah? Mm. But uh, um, the power of mind is more than... Um, you can learn at the university. Mm. And for example, uh, I teach a lot of um, sportsmen mm. in mental strategies. Mm. And if you are very focused, if you can create uh, aura, mm. this can this have an enormous effect mm. of others. Mm. So the interaction is uh, very influenced mm. of so-called uh, seltsome uh, <laughs> of, of strange or weird techniques mm. Yeah? Mm. and uh, they are also uh, cultural um, dependent mm -hmm. maybe if you use a voodoo technique in mm -hmm. Germany, this doesn't work because mm -hmm. you don't touch the beliefs of the person. Mm -hmm. In Africa, maybe you help someone. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And uh, for, uh, some moments ago, I talked with uh, Moses mm -hmm. and he talked about uh, rebels or uh, child, mm -hmm. child soldiers. Mm -hmm. And 20 years ago, mm -hmm. I read about a ritual in Africa, where they broke a, a, an egg, mm. and don't know if you know about mm. something about the ritual. In, in Germany, I, I, I can't understand what is happening during right. this, mm. but for people there, mm. I believe that it's an enormous effect. Mm. 
So you think the belief system or the cultural antecedents that surround yes. our belief system eventually affect our thinking yeah. and maybe power us subconsciously to believe in certain directions yes. or to believe or to believe in certain things. Okay. I, would, I would imagine so. I don't know. Uh, let me give you another example. And, and, yes. and, and another part, because you, you told about um, hypnosis or yes. something else. Yes. For example, uh, when I, uh, I told you about the sports mind and, and the mental strategies, mm. for example, if you uh, talk about football mm. and uh, there's a penalty, mm. yeah, and here is the guy who will shoot, and here is the, the Torwart, the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper. Mm. Maybe if they both are professionals, mm. if they both are good in techniques, mm. the only difference is the way they look at themselves. Wow! Because this makes a difference. Wow! Yeah, the technique maybe is is uh, is the same. Yes. But uh, if you try to create a difference, mm. maybe you look at him uh, like hypnotic mm. and maybe you think uh, you as a goalkeeper believes I'm shooting in the left corner, mm -hmm. in the left corner, mm -hmm. in the left corner, mm -hmm. in the left corner. So it keeps... And then I will shoot in the right. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, you catch the ball. Mm -hmm. But it makes a difference because maybe I shoot in the right corner mm. and you go to the left. Mm. It it um, strokes my belief, mm. and I have the uh, subjective uh, in, uh, belief mm. that I made this. Yes, and this uh, pushes up my belief system, my yeah. power, yes, the confidence, and if it's true or not, mm. it's not important, mm. but the process of believing and pushing yourself mm. uh, makes the 5% more, more energy wow. you need. Wow, yeah? excellent, that's beautiful, because it tells me something, yesterday I was in, 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 a, in, a, in a stadium uh, in Germany here, and there's a gentleman who has who rode uh, who, uh, the fastest uh, supersonic uh, automobile, mm -hmm. and and one of the things that he wrote was that don't just wish it, make it happen. Mm -hmm. So you're arguing that the belief system, our confidence, can propel us to do things perhaps that are imaginable, even yes. outside our own strength. Um, I think it also was uh, J.F. Kennedy. I think who said that it, you know. It's, it's not the fear that 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 you should be afraid. It's 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 a fear itself, yeah. you know, the the absence of fear. So the point you're making here is extremely important. But also, let me uh, perhaps give another example of a gentleman okay. called uh, John Moore. I think uh, John Moore had um, was his grand the grandmother had uh, one of those diseases that we talk about uh, uh, that had to do with the dementia, mm -hmm. forgetting everything and couldn't mm -hmm. remember. I couldn't even remember you know, where they put the next cup and stuff like that. I think it's very common in Europe mm -hmm. and a little bit of Africa. And he dedicated his life to, 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 to harness his memory, to use his memory. And he wrote a book called Moonwalking with Einstein. And, and, and he, he said, he, he actually went ahead and won almost every memory, uh, you know, competition championship in the US and the entire world. And this is a guy you could just put a deck of cards, a deck of cards, you know, you know, cards, and then you flip them over, and he will tell you where each one was in its right okay. position. Yes. So the the argument is that he said we have the ability to use our brains to to make them turn them into something. He, actually, the book is called The Art of Remembering Everything. Mm -hmm. Although he was arguing that it's important that I think I was reading somewhere that it's important that the brain should have the capacity to forget, because if it doesn't have the capacity to forget, then you you will get clouded. Yeah. and bust perhaps. There's a gentleman actually who was reading who had the same problem. He could remember every employee, the colleagues at the work, he could remember the boss's assignments, every little detail, you know, and he actually died because the brain didn't have that ability to give up that. Uh, as a psychologist, is that something that you see in life? Yes, I see in life that, uh, um, for example, the logic of memories mm. are really uh, a complex organizational process 
uh, for example myself, if I come home from holidays, I don't know the names of my clients mm. because in between three weeks I forget everything. Mm. So it's like if you don't have uh, a hard disk in your computer. Mm. But as soon, uh, but if I open the door for them, mm. I know their telephone number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and after three to five sentences, mm. I, I don't need to read uh, what I wrote uh, whole, uh, the whole therapy. Mm. I knew everything. Mm. But it, it needs uh, a special trigger mm. to open the doors to my memory. Yes. And some people try to explain how to to uh, increase the power of your memories yes. and you use the total brain. Mm -hmm. Most of the time I'm wondering about the different techniques mm -hmm. <laughs> they are possible mm -hmm. and I don't know that there's only one way mm -hmm. but there are different kind of arts how to, mm -hmm. to understand how our brain will work. Memory pellets, I think they say the argument I think that uh, John Fowler was trying to advise is the use of memory pellets where you you visualize mm. or you attach uh, what you want to remember onto mm. a color or perhaps onto a memory or an image and you never forget that. We're concluding, don't worry. I want us to discuss briefly about grief. Grief is something that is eminent in Africa and perhaps even here. Yeah. When you come here, uh, my, uh, I have a gentleman called Moses and they were counseling and said, you may not speak about you know, demons or manifestation. You have to talk about things like depression, things like, like you know, uh, bipolar, stuff like that. What is the biggest cause of grief, generally, in your opinion, as a psychologist? Uh, the biggest thing, I think, is fear and depression. 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 And uh, things like perhaps death of a loved one, divorce or breakup, loss of a pet. I have a friend who lost a pet. In Africa, you lose a pet, like a cat or a dog, I'll simply throw it in the dustbin. Here, it's another story. There's a lot of attachment. Yeah, in our culture, to have an animal is to to increase your family. <laughs> and for example, my uh, mother-in-law suffers from Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. So she forget everything. She don't um, know that I'm still her uh, son-in-law. Mm. And it was very hard to lose her. Mm -hmm. But three months after that mm -hmm. we lose our dog mm -hmm. and we are weird about our feelings because we are more sad mm -hmm. no that's not right but we feel more our sadness mm -hmm. during the loss of our dog oh yeah because the loss of our mother or mother-in-law mm -hmm. we have to cope for five years mm -hmm. and it's gone. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. This thing is not the actual thing. Mm -hmm. And the other, uh, I think it's not the, uh, oh, it's a mix. At first is we have a, a relation to our dog like a part of a family. Right. And second, uh, it's, um, it's not only the dog, but it stands also as a symbol for others, for other relatives. Okay. And for the, for example, you talked about Ainsworth. Yes. I studied two years by Ainsworth, uh, with Ainsworth. Oh, wonderful. And, and study the bonding process with Bowlby and, and we discuss a lot of things. Mm. And during, she is uh, checking how uh, mothers are caring for their babies mm. when they are three months old mm. <laughs> I compare it with dolphins mm. and how dolphins care for their babies mm. Mm. and we saw that the bonding system is one of the important thing right. and so if grief uh, is a uh, is an answer of your your bonding mm. it's it depends on which is your subject wow. where you depend Excellent. Empirical findings relating to grief. We have uh, the lady called Kubla Ross, uh, mm -hmm. I think you probably yeah. know her, who proposed some of the uh, basic stages, emotional stages that individuals express yeah. uh, or go through during time of loss. And um, one of the things I think they that I wanted to mention for our viewers that's extremely important, 
are the stages of grief, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We could go through them in, in conclusion so that uh, in the interest of time, uh, yes, I would mention one by one and then you will explain mm -hmm. so that uh, people can comprehend where we are coming from and uh, understand. Uh, okay, the concept of grief, as it was popularized by Elizabeth Kubler mm -hmm. in her book, The Death and Dying, published in 1969. Yeah. Um, and she said five stages of grief. The first one was denial, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The second one was anger. Mm -hmm. The third one is bargaining. Uh, fourth one is depression. Fifth is acceptance. And insight into that. Okay. At first, uh, also for your audience, yes. I'm, I need to I need Patrick to translate the, the, the words because okay. I know the five steps, but in German. That's okay. So the first Say them in German. Denial. No problem. Say in Germany and then you use okay. your okay. direct translation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't need to talk it in German, but yes. he, I need to uh, his translation for the, the, the first step. The first step is denial. Denial is leugnung. Yeah. Okay. So I understand mm. because it's the same, but yes. I want to check if it's the same. same. Okay. Mm. Yes, denial. Okay. Denial means um, uh, I'm I'm a girl. You are my husband. Mm -hmm. You die. Mm. And then I, I cry, and next I, I, I need a long time to fall asleep tonight, and next morning I wake up, and my first hope is, last day was a dream. I don't lose you, it's not true, mm. I will find you again, I will hear, <laughs> oh I will smell your mm. perfume, mm. I will hear your voice, mm. and... I'm happy because then my first thought is he's here again. Oh, he's wow. still here. Oh, wow. That's what denial. means denial. Yeah. Second step, anger. Anger means I I realize one step more is uh, I don't um Patrick was heißt abwerten. Abwerten? Expect? No, not expect. Uh neck. Neglect, can you say it? Mm. No, neglect, can you yeah, say yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Neglect? Yeah, neglect. I don't neglect uh, steps how to neglect reality. Mm. Yeah? Mm. I, I'm not sure okay. what to do. Mm. Neglect means it's, mm. uh, I, I, try to I, I have a doubt. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. And if I, uh, in the f second step, mm. I realize he's dead. Mm. Mm. But, I, my first answer is emotion, mm. but not uh, uh, sadness, but anger. Mm. And anger means uh, I'm angry about him to go, mm. that he that he's gone, or right. about me, or about everything mm. in our behavior and our history. Mm. What's not finished? Right. Number three, bargaining. Individuals attempt to negotiate. With a higher power or reverse the loss, bargaining as a, as a third step. So, bargaining. Bargaining. Verhandeln so, dass er hier du schaust, dass du du willst quasi verhandeln ob absolut oder nicht. Okay, so maybe uh, okay because i'm at home with the german uh, right. word so uh, maybe your audience will understand that i need a little time. that's okay that's uh, um, i think the, this the third step talks about how to uh, make the next step in realizing what's the truth okay so i want to know uh, why is it has it happened? True. What can I do mm. to to uh, overcome the pain right. and the grief? Right. Uh, I tried to make a deal with uh, God or with uh, my last uh, relative. Right. Or, uh, what's the topic of the grief? Excellent. And so it's the, the the real process and progress to to make deals with the reality uh, how i can cope that it's true so in in, in my words mm. uh, i have three steps right excellent so 
May I, may I introduce my three steps? Maybe you can... Your, your three steps? Okay, the last one... Okay, so okay. let me just... But the, oh, okay, first we discuss the... Okay, the, uh, last the, last, the, the second last will be depression, which I think is obvious, yeah. coming in terms of reality as a loss, and then yeah. the acceptance, I understanding that now I know yeah. it's, 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 it's what? It's, it's a bad deal or something has happened. Yeah. Uh, yes, but now go ahead and introduce uh, your, your options. Bei, yes. bei, bei diesen drei Schritten brauche ich ein bisschen deine Hilfe, weil das viel Grammatik ist zu übersetzen. Mm -hmm. The first step is, uh, it's not the truth. <laughs> okay. It's, it's not, not the truth. Mm, it's I, not the truth. I, I don't accept. Yes. I don't accept what you tell me about the truth. Mm. It's not, it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened. The More next like step mm. is, it happens. Mm. It happened. Mm. It has happened. Mm. And it, it, it's allowed mm. to accept that it had happened. Mm. Uh, and so you know about the, 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 the kind of uh, grammatic. Mm. You understand that the past is making step by step mm. and if you are at the last step that you can accept mm. that it had happened right. you you can be happy mm. because uh, and and explore this new feeling right because you can see oh we lived for 30 years together we mm. have happy times mm. i i can remember you mm. and activate positive memories right and this uh it's good for my heart, right. better than to grieve. Right. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so some of the symptoms of grief include emotional symptoms, intense sadness, despair, anguish, crying, numbness, guilt, uh, mood swings and stuff yes. like that. Then cognitive symptoms as well, mm -hmm. difficult in terms of uh, feelings or, uh, in, you know, intrusive thoughts, disbelief, denial, then psychological or physical symptoms that have to do with sleep disturbances, insomnia, excessive sleeping, Changes in appetite, fatigue, and loss of wear. Then behavior symptoms that have to do with avoidance of places. Uh, so that's things that we need to look out as individuals, even as we, uh, because uh, grief is a very uh, terrible thing. And then social symptoms, feeling of isolation and loneliness, and ex and then existential symptoms, questioning the meaning of life, purpose of one's existence, and then anniversary reactions. Uh, some individuals may experience what they call intensified grief symptoms, and then somatic symptoms that have to do with, uh, 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 you know underlying medical causes such as unexplained aches or pains or health issues and many others as we can share emotional numbness, accommodation, integration and the like, like that. But uh, in conclusion, perhaps uh, of our discussion here, I would like my friend uh, to give us uh, an interaction in terms of uh, some of the major diseases that you think uh, you have, you know, treated that, that underline the, what we're talking about, examples of grief illnesses. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, major ones. <clears throat> you want to know? Yes, some of them. You want to know some, some of, of the them. diseases mm. I treated? In terms of grief illness. In I'll give examples, for example, major depressive disorders, yeah. what you call MDD, mm -hmm. anxiety disorders, uh, schizophrenia. And you then know, in, in, in my office. In your office, yes. Bipolar office, disorder. I worked, I worked with every body mm. and because i worked with everybody i mainly have disorders with uh, depression mm. and anxiety disorders mm. and schizophrenia mm. bipolar disorders mm. and uh, behavioral disorders and character disorders wow so but uh, in fact the the the, the, the most uh, problems people have with grief mm. uh, are when they lose people mm. or when they lose their job mm. or when they lose their identity. Mm. For example, if you uh, have uh, schizophrenia, mm. it depends also how old are you mm. and how long mm. you are aware of your own personality. Mm. If you are 20 years old and you suffer from uh, schizophrenia, you're uh, ego state mm. is not so uh, fixed and uh, and long lasted mm. so it it makes more grief mm. for you because you don't know who you are
Mm. Oh dear. Okay, so now uh, the honorable gentleman is going to give us solutions to those major problems because this is perhaps the main reason why we are sharing this. This is the most important part of our discussion. Let me just mention the diseases because you may have the disease and you may not know. Some people have denials, they don't want to accept mm -hmm. until someone points it out and says, by the way, there's a problem. But let me just mention them and then he will give us a general blanket of how perhaps we can have what? Self awareness but also how we can solve these challenges because you could run mad and without you knowing major depressive disorders for example anxiety anxiety disorders and then things to do with the uh, uh, schizophrenia uh, that you talked about disorganized thinking social withdrawals and stuff like that and then things to do with uh, bipolar disorder mm -hmm. post-traumatic disorder obsessive compulsory disorder mm -hmm. borderline personality disorder eating disorder think about that yeah. eating disorder <laughs> extremely important, you know, and then uh, we have other things like attention deficit or mm -hmm. hyperactivity disorder, automism, spectrum disorder, substance use disorder, sch schizoaffective disorder, disassociative identity disorder, major neuro cognitive disorder, or what we call dementia, and then generalized anxiety disorder, uh, conduct disorder, inter intermediate explosive disorder, um, substance induced disorders, body uh, dimorphic disorders um holding disorders avoiding personality disorders you know postpartum depression uh so many gender dysphoria mm -hmm. you know specific phobia insomnia disorder all those are issues then there's this interesting one which is called narcissism which amazed me when i got to know about narcissism with it but, but and, and the symptoms of narcissism i'll mention them if i have time but what there's so many disorders i say yeah. well, how what advice would you give people in terms of addressing those disorders, okay. yes. So, because you are addressing people who are maybe looking at this video, yes, I will tell you first, there is no general solution. Mm. <laughs> but uh, maybe there is a solution for you. Mm. And one of the uh, first thing I will advise is try to find someone who is professional, because you can check if you, the your your belief what you have is uh, right or not because maybe you are suffering of a schizophrenia and you don't know it or you don't believe it because this kind of uh, illness uh, means that you will be the last to understand that you are ill mm. but if you have problems with others use it to uh, look for an advice mm. for others mm. i will tell you uh, i will give you advices on two levels mm. the first level is psychology mm. as a psychologist i will uh, advise you that uh, you need three things to survive mm. <laughs> the first is a structure in the day structure if, in the day structure in the day mm. if you if you suffer uh, your attention will fall inside. You look at yourself and all the thoughts and feelings are cruising around yourself. Mm. And this has also a hypnotic effect that uh, stabilizes the dysfunctional processes inside of your soul. Mm. Uh, so you need to find a way to focus outside. For example, you see me and maybe you see something standing on the table. If I try to focus outside myself, I can change my point of view and try only to describe what I'm seeing outside. Mm. I'm sitting here on my table, I see some flowers on the table, they are yellow, some have a black point in the middle, mm. there are also violet flowers, there are some uh, cakes on the table, mm. there is a glass with sugar and a spoon, mm. there are some beautiful nice guys here on the table, mm. but beautiful nice guy is a judgment, this is not a description. <laughs> so try to understand, we're talking about descriptions. Right. If, you, if, you, if you stay uh, with descriptions, you don't suffer from your 
maybe dysfunctional cognitive processes and for example if you suffer from borderline or from depression your thoughts are if you look through a black glass uh, uh, um, spectacles, spectacles mm -hmm. and this changes your uh, kind of thinking and your feelings so um, second advice mm -hmm. Uh, oh, no, first advice, structure of a day means you have plans hour by hour what you can do and if you are bored or if you feel bad you should have some um, some plans what is your duty, what should be done and others what can be good for you can take a bath, you can drink, uh, you can uh, write a friend, you can talk with somebody, you can have a cup of coffee and the sun in your back mm. and the warmth of a blanket or something else. Mm. And in the evening you can look back to the day and you can find two or three things which you are happy of and which you are responsible for. You have done it. Mm. If you are mental ill, your self, your power to create your own day is low. Mm. And if you change something to give you the feeling you can make a difference, mm. helps you very much because life is in your hands. Right. Second step. Mm. If you feel bad, if you have grief, you will lose your social contacts. Mm. Social, to lose social contacts in the first five minutes mm. is beautiful mm. because it's not so difficult. You don't have to play a role. You don't have to be strong or make show. But uh, in the second step, you lose everything what helps you to feel uh, self-confident. Mm. That you, you don't uh, receive strokes, you don't receive social attendance. Mm. And this lowers your feelings. Mm. Third step, you should remember what was funny or what was nice or what was easy to do in the past. Mm. Some people have to look one month ago, others have to look 10 years ago. Mm. But it's necessary that you get more in contact with your needs. And that can be mm, easy, normal needs that can be deeper needs. Some people have needs for social contact mm. or for to be touched. Mm. Others have the need to uh, go for a swim mm. or to uh, have a, a special dinner. Mm. If you have experienced what made, made you happy last year, repeat it. Right. You won't have it's not necessary to want it. Mm. You should only do it. Right. And maybe after doing, your feelings will change. Right. But you don't know it at first. Right. Okay, excellent. Now, so narcissism is the last one that I'm concluding with. And narcissism, uh, because I see that it is evidently popular in where we come from, in our jurisprudence, Narcissism becomes a personality trait that is characterized by excessive preoccupation with oneself, a grandiose sense of self-importance, a need of admiration, a lack of empathy for others. It's very, very evident in, in the kind of uh, situation where we come from. But uh, for purposes of more, I would like to concentrate on our conclusion in a sense that we are, I am writing a book and uh, my brother here may have uh, an impact on it in called The Guardians of the Mind. Guardians of the mind, navigating the tapestry of mental illness and associated illnesses within the protective laws of Uganda. And that is a, it's going to be a bestseller. And I would like my friend here to, I would share with him, maybe he can write a review for us of that book so that we can be able to 
you know, uh, continue educating nations. Okay. But uh, I would like to thank you uh, for the interesting discussion that we've had. I think our audience will definitely appreciate the, all the wonderful words that have come from you. Uh, for avoidance of doubt, he is a, a psychologist of no, mean, uh, of, of, of no less uh, reputation. He has, uh, you know, distinguished himself around this area and treated several diseases that have to do with psychological challenges. Uh, so Mr. Horst Bash uh, is also, as I said, um, our host today and uh, here in Newstead, uh, Germany. So we want to thank you. In conclusion, is there anything you want to conclude, sir? Uh, uh, I only was waiting if you ask me something about narcissism. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can say something about narcissism. Okay. okay. Mm. What, what, what I maybe uh, my you know we discuss a lot about psychology yes. and the history of psychology. Yes. And in former times, also. Uh, 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 together with your thoughts about uh, psychology of law and legal psych psychology. Uh, uh, psycho psychology creates a lot of um, systems about personality, character, mm. and in, in Germany, for example, in, in, the, in the society, it's not is it it's common if you talk about narcissism mm. that you talk bad about persons mm. uh, in a professional way mm. it only means the self organization of a of a, a person mm. and if you don't believe that it's a, a structure of brain or something else mm. or, or only depending on the dna mm. uh, it's uh, Difficult but changeable. Right. And first, it means that you believe too much in yourself, mm -hmm. and that this affects uh, disorders in your social behavior. Mm. You are egoistic. Mm -hmm. You uh, uh, push other people's people to uh, serve your needs, mm -hmm. and you don't be sensible for their needs mm -hmm. and so it's a little bit uh, like a dictator <laughs> <laughs> that's the reason why i was i didn't want to mention so much because <laughs> it's very evident in where we come from of uh, certain individuals who might actually be suffering from that without knowing that they're actually suffering <laughs> from it <laughs> yes okay. but thank you so much i think uh we have been blessed and honored to have you and uh he's uh, also being extremely helpful is uh, my friend called uh, Inginia Sereko, mm -hmm. uh, who uh, he has partnered with together with some people to help uh, establish a hospital in in, in, in Uganda, and, and and things are you know in the in the in the pipeline, and mm -hmm. we are forever grateful. He has visited Uganda. What did you like most about Uganda? Oh, uh, I like the, the waterfalls in. Marchen Falls. Huh? Falls. 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 And, and the streets of Kampala. <laughs> 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 Very different from those you have here in Germany. So thank you once again. God thank bless you. you and thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Right.